In this example, we're asked to find the last term to make the trinomial into a perfect square. So let's first review what a perfect square trinomial looks like and where it comes from, how we get one. So let's say I had two binomials multiplied together that were identical. In other words, they, this could be written as x plus 3 quantity squared, right? Because it's one thing times an identical twin, right? So that's a squared binomial. Now let's FOIL it out, let's multiply it out on the left side here so that we can see what it looks like when it is made into a trinomial. So multiplying, we'll go ahead and FOIL, we'll use first, outer, inner, last, or distribution. So we're distributing the x here, this x, to both terms inside the second set of parentheses, right? And so the first two terms is our f in the acronym FOIL, so we have x squared. Then the outer terms give us 3x, okay? Then we're going to do our inner terms plus 3x, okay? So now we're distributing this 3 to both terms inside the second set of parentheses, right? So 3x and then positive 9, okay? And so that's that's what we just figured out, except for you can simplify this. Now notice the doubling effect in the center. When you have two identical binomials multiplied, you do end up with those two inner middle x terms um, being identical. So that middle term, when simplified, is like that, okay? So let's look at it from another angle. Let's look at another example. Now this one is not a perfect square trinomial. It's not a trinomial at all. It's, uh, we need to add a constant term. Now if we want to add a constant term so that we can write it as a binomial squared, then we need to figure out what to add to make that happen, right? And so what we've seen so far is that the middle term of a perfect square trinomial is a double of the last two terms product. So what I mean is if I take 10 and divide it by 2, then I'll have 5, right? Now if I add 5 squared, then I will have a polynomial that factors out to x plus 5 quantity squared. Let me prove it. So we're going to we're going to multiply it out. The first two terms give me x squared. The outer terms give me 5x. The inner terms give me 5x again. And the last two give me 25. So x squared plus 10x plus 25 in factored form is x plus 5 quantity squared. It's a perfect square. This is a perfect square trinomial, and this is it in factored form, or what we call a binomial squared. Okay, so uh, one more example. Say I want to complete the square here. Again, since I have a lead coefficient of 1, I can simply take half of the middle term, and that would be negative 4, and I'm going to add negative 4 squared. And once I do that and simplify it, it's going to be x squared minus 8x. And then a negative 4 times a negative 4 would give me a positive 16. And written as a binomial squared, it's the square root of the first term, the square root of the last term, and then whatever the sign is in the middle. So this pattern will work over and over and over again to complete the square. As long as you have a lead coefficient of 1. Now if you have a lead coefficient that is not 1, it becomes more of a challenge. So for instance, if I had 4x squared plus 12x and I was trying to complete the square so I could write it as a perfect square, try, uh, as a binomial squared, then I would have some other things to consider which are not covered in this video. Okay, so if it's a lead coefficient of 1, what did we do? We took the middle term, 
coefficient and multiplied it by a half, or in other words, divided it by two. So if it's a fraction, it feels more um, scary probably, but all we have to do is take half of 10 over nine, right? And so what's half of 10 over nine? So you can take 10 over nine and keep the sign with it and multiply it times one half. And sometimes the numerator is even and that two will cancel out or reduce with that numerator. And that gives us five over nine. Okay, so if we're trying to um, complete the square here, what we're gonna add is negative five over nine quantity squared. <laughs> well, what is negative five over nine when it's squared? Multiply straight across and you get 25 over 81, right? So all this to say, what we need to do is take half of the middle terms coefficient and square it and that's the answer that would go right here so that would be 25 over 81 for this part of the problem. And how would we write that out in factored form? We would write it out as a quantity squared. The middle term has a negative here. So we're gonna write negative. And the first term square root is x. The last term square root is Square root of 25 is 5, square root of 81 is 9, right? So that's what it would look like in factored form. Or perhaps if it's expanded, it would look like this.